the history of Patagonia. On September 14, 2022, Yvonne Chenard, the creator of the privately held outdoor apparel chain Patagonia, announced that he would donate his company to fight climate change. Let's learn more about the heartwarming history of Patagonia and its founder, a lifetime rock climbing lover, outdoor enthusiast, and environmental crusader who led to the founding of an outdoor retail network with hundreds of outlets around the world. In a world of billionaires firing their employees from using the restroom, announcing layoffs through bulk emails and social media, and glorifying their egos with space rocket companies, it's nice to see a billionaire who really walked the talk. Patagonia's success lies in the realness of its brand and the passions of its founder for the outdoors and humanity. Yvonne Chenard's Biography Chenard claims he never intended to be a businessman. Rather, he began as a craftsman, manufacturing climbing gear for his friends and himself before branching out into clothing. Chenard was born in Lewiston, Maine on November 9, 1938. He grew up in a French-speaking area as the son of French-Canadian immigrants and struggled with English when his family relocated to Southern California in 1947. Growing older, Siobhan was infamous for being useless at whatever he tried. At 14, he began climbing. The sport wasn't popular in America at the time. He became interested in falconry after joining a local club in Southern California. Yvonne was quickly gripped by the exhilaration and intensity of rappelling down to the slopes of high cliffs. He also began surfing. Soon after, Yvonne and his companions began going out on their own expeditions, traveling throughout America to rappel down cliffs. They would journey from the west end of the San Fernando Valley to the sandstone cliffs of Stony Point, hopping from freight train to freight train. Eventually, climbing became his way of life. With the U.S. Army in Seoul, Korea during the 1960s, he even pioneered numerous rock climbing routes in Mount Pukan National Park. History of Chenard's Equipment Business Yvonne, who was environmentally sensitive, saw the impact of his climbing equipment was having on the granite walls. He then started creating his own equipment to attempt to prevent more injuries. This concern for the environment would become a driving element behind the company's culture. In 1957, he began learning blacksmithing to create reusable climbing equipment that would not hurt the environment. This hobby quickly became a company. He started selling his pythons, metal spikes, for $1.50 apiece. Yvonne began to sustain himself by selling his equipment. He began to travel around America, climbing during the day and foraging at night. Chenard's company began to grow, although slowly. In Burbank, California, he opened a business in his parents' backyard. However, because most of his instruments were portable, he was able to move easily. For a while, he supported himself by selling gear out of the back of his car, although his revenues were little at the time. By 1965, he had formed Chenard Equipment with his buddy and fellow climber, Tom Frost. The team spent nine years creating and improving climbing equipment. They intended to make them tougher, lighter, simpler, and more practical. By 1970, just after five years in operation, Patagonia claimed to be the leading provider of climbing hardware in the United States. However, the company swiftly realized the long-term damage its pythons were causing to the rocks. Chenard and Frost decided to exit the python industry, which accounted for 70% of the revenues, a big commercial risk, but one that demonstrated their concern for the environment first and foremost. Chenard equipment introduced aluminum chalks to the climbing market in 1972. In terms of the environmental effect, they represented a significant improvement over the rock-destroying pythons utilized by climbers at the time. The bet paid off as demand for the new aluminum chalks rapidly exceeded Chernard Equipment's ability to build them. This contributed to the new clean climbing movement championed by Chernard in the company's first equipment brochure, which featured extensive information on climbing ethics in addition to exhibiting items. Germ of Patagonia's clothing business. Yvonne liked climbing not just on the American West Coast, but also in mountain ranges all over the world. He accidentally discovered a concept that would revolutionize the apparel business in the early 1970s. A trip from California to Scotland would lead to Yvonne establishing a clothing empire. On a winter climbing expedition to Scotland in 1970, he purchased a rugby jersey to wear while climbing. This was a far cry from his typical cut-off chinos and white dress shirts purchased at charity stores. This impulsive buy would alter his life forever. The collar kept Chenard's neck from being sliced by metal slings. He had a feeling he was onto something. Back at home, Yvonne continued to climb in rugby shirts. The idea caught on, and before he knew it, he'd established a new fashion trend with a vividly painted rugby jersey with a nice collar in great demand. Yvonne bought jerseys from Umbro in England to meet rising demand. 
They were completely sold out. He then started placing orders from New Zealand and Argentina. They too sold out. Clothing was seen as a method for the Chouinard team to supplement their equipment business. They had grown much more by 1972. They were now selling Scottish raincoat cagoules, lightweight hooded, thigh-length waterproof jackets, and bouverac bags, Austrian boiled wool gloves and mittens, and bolder hand milled reversible Chizio hats. Clothing sales eventually eclipsed climbing hardware sales, and Chouinard realized he needed a distinctive brand identity. Yvonne met and married Melinda Penoyer in 1971. Pagoda was founded by the couple in Ventura, California in 1972. In 1973, their first Patagonia shop opened in Ventura, California, where the company is still headquartered today. The Pagonia brand served to distinguish clothing lines from Chenard's equipment's mountaineering specific items, allowing the brand to be perceived as supplying products for everyone active in outdoor activities rather than just mountain climbers. This also came in handy as the equipment business faced legal and financial difficulties later on. Chenard picked the name because he was inspired by his excursions to the Patagonia region and he believed they conjured up romantic pictures of glaciers flowing to fjords, ragged windswept peaks, gauchers, and condors. Pagoda debuted its now iconic logo in 1975 with the silhouette of Mount Fritzroy, a mountain in the Patagonia area between Argentina and Chile. The logo was created in cooperation between Yvonne Chenard and Jocelyn Slack, a freelance artist for Patagonia, and is presently featured on most Patagonia items. Chenard equipment was forced to declare bankruptcy in 1989 after losing a series of safety-related litigation. Former employees purchased the Chenard Equipment Company and continued to produce revolutionary climbing gear under the brand name Black Diamond Equipment. The clothing business also ran into financial troubles. Patagonia found itself overextended in 1991 in the middle of a recession. Bankruptcy was looming. Chenard's accountants brought him to a meeting with a mafia official who offered him a loan with an 18% interest rate, an offer that Yvonne refused. Finally, the Chenards borrowed money from a friend and other Argentinians looking to get their money out of the country. The corporation was forced to lay off 20% of its employees. This incident, along with the wisdom of middle age, jolted him and prompted him to revise the company's objective. In the 1980s, he was growing increasingly anxious about being a businessman and about the inevitable adjustments and sacrifices that came with corporate success. He was concerned that the firm was drifting away from its essential values. He was confronted with the prospects of owning a billion dollar company with thousands of people creating outdoor-like apparel for posers. Chernard outlined his concerns and new commitments in a manifesto in the Patagonia catalog under the headline, The Next Hundred Years. Patagonia Social Efforts Patagonia's first excursion into environmental activism started in 1974 to protest the probable disruption of a popular surf break due to proposed construction on the Ventura River mouth. Starting in the 1980s, the company became one of the first firms in the U.S. to provide on-site daycare for employees. Patagonia's lifelong dedication to treating employees properly included paid time off and sick days, which were extremely generous at the time. It opened an on-site cafeteria for staff, offering nutritious organic cuisine throughout the day. In 1986, Patagonia announced that 10% of the company's income would be donated to environmental organizations. The company then decided to donate either 1% of total sales or 10% of profits, whichever was greater. This pledge has been kept ever since. Patagonia has been a trailblazer in using environmentally friendly materials, recycling clothing, and ensuring that all manufacturing partners satisfy performance requirements for quality, environmental impact, and labor fairness. Listing all of the company's efforts would be another video in itself. However, one worth mentioning is its renowned Black Friday 2011 ad. Patagonia published its Don't Buy This Jacket ad in the New York Times to persuade shoppers to abandon throwaway fashion, think about their purchasing habits, and buy just what they needed. How many companies do you know spend money to persuade customers not to buy their products? Patagonia has spent decades improving its products since its debut. To design their goods, they explored various materials, colors, working situations, and environmental ethics. These are items they are proud of, and they will help to make the environment safer. Patagonia is now one of the world's premier ecologically conscious apparel companies. Beyond apparel, the firm is dedicated to teaching and training the next generation of environmental activists. 
Patagonia is doing this as part of its continued commitment to find a solution to the current environmental catastrophe. Whereas other environmentally and socially friendly successful startups such as The Body Shop and Ben & Jerry's were eventually sold to corporations by their founders, Yvonne Chenard's generous donation to fight climate change is truly inspirational. Do you agree with our assessment? Do you know of other heartwarming companies? Please comment below. Thank you for watching our video. If you enjoyed our video, please subscribe and click the bell icon for more videos like this one. And before we sign off, here's another interesting business video you might like.